Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations uh, to all of you. Um, judge on the far end, uh, tell, tell me what Article 5 of the Constitution does. Article 5 is not coming to mind at the moment. Okay. How about Article 2? Neither is Article 2. Okay. Do you know what purposivism is? Um, in my 12 years as an assistant attorney general huh? and my nine years serving as a judge, I was not faced with that precise question. Um, we are the highest trial court in Washington state, so I'm frequently faced with um, issues that I'm not familiar with, and I thoroughly review the law, our research, and apply the law to the facts okay. presented to me. Well, you're going to be faced with it as a, if you're confirmed. I can assure you of that. Um, Mr. I can't really see from this angle, I apologize. Mr. Brookman, uh, define originalism for me. Thank you, Senator, for that question. My understanding of originalism. I'm going to turn your microphone on. Thank you, Senator, for that question. My understanding of originalism is the notion that the Constitution has an enduring and a fixed nature, an enduring quality and a fixed nature to it. What does that mean? It means that the words uh, matter, and that the word that the uh, that the words of the, that the framers used to draft the Constitution matter, and that it has a fixed quality to it and has an enduring nature. Well, how do you determine the fixed quality? Who who determines what the words mean? From uh, that, whose perspective, Senator, in my uh, time as a magistrate judge, I've not dealt with issues of constitutional interpretation, but my understanding is that uh, you would begin with the language of the Constitution itself. Yeah, okay, I agree with that. All right, anybody want to add? Have, um, um, counselor, Ms. Merchant? I mean, you, here's what I'm getting at. When you, when you say originalism, the words mean what they mean. From whose perspective? Thank you for the question, Senator. Uh, similar to my colleagues, uh, I would look to the text uh, in terms of originalism. When you're asking, uh, to the extent that you're asking what I would look to, uh, if so fortunate to be confirmed as a judge, uh, I would look to the, the precedent, uh, first of the text. Yes, ma'am, but I'm then, trying to get you to define originalism for me. What's your understanding of it? Uh, yes, thank you, Senator, to clarify. Uh, my understanding of originalism is similar to that of my colleagues. Um, and uh, in looking at the text and the meaning that was intended in that text, um, that is the spirit in, of... Intended by whom? By the original writers of that text. So to you, originalism, you try to interpret what the writers, the authors meant? In an analysis, a uh, constitutional analysis, uh -huh. uh, it would be the originalism, uh, the text, and the intent of those that drafted the Constitution. I don't think that's accurate. Does anybody disagree with that? When, when, when the Supreme Court says it's following an originalist approach, and, and, and in uh, a number of cases, all uh, particularly deal, dealing with Second Amendment, the U.S. Supreme Court has said, on this one, we're all originalists. I think it was Judge Sotomayor who said that, Justice Sotomayor. Um, and on many areas, she's more of a, a takes a, she's more of a purposivist, but on that she was an originalist. She, she didn't say we look at, we're looking for the meaning that the drafters intended, was she? Anybody want to add to that? Senator, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to add to that. My understanding is that... That's okay. Let me just ask one more. I'm about to run out of time. Um, judge, 
on the far end. Can you tell me what the independent state legislature theory is? Just, I'm just asking you, not your opinion of what is it? It's before the Supreme Court now. In my 12 years as a Washington State Assistant Attorney General, and right. the, that particular um, doctrine was not presented to me. I'm out of time. Thanks, Mr. Chairman.